Osiris is guarding all of time and reality. We do what is required. Hi friends, I'm losing my cool and in today's video I want to talk a little about Destiny 2 and a new expansion, Curse of Osiris. So, Curse of Osiris was released yesterday, 5th of December 2017. This is the first expansion for Destiny 2 and the price right now, if you don't have the season pass, is 19.99 US dollars and that's on the Xbox. I don't know if the price is any different on PlayStation or PC. The storyline for Curse of Osiris is again. that Good. there's a new that's Vex plot on Mercury. And after a few cinematics, we are told that we need to enlist Osiris's help against the Vex. Uh, your warlock vanguard, Ikora Ray, learns that the male element machines have opened a gate on the small planet during the Red War, and they are gathering a massive trans-temporal army. The max level now is uh, level 25, and the power level cap is now 335. You can now buy legendary engrams from the Crypt Arc. Uh, I don't really like that, because it removes some of the reasons for grinding. Basically, there's a lot of people that has a lot of uh, legendary shards, so they don't need even need to play. They can just go to the Crypt Arc and uh, get a lot of engrams. <laughs> and uh, I think that's kind of stupid actually. So it's already pretty easy to get the legendary engrams and uh, you can just do a couple of public events and you will end up with a few legendary engrams and even possibly exotic engrams. So why? Can you buy it off the Crypt Arc? I think that's that's really stupid. So it feels like Bergi are kind of removing uh, Destiny 2 from the loot and grind genre and uh, just uh, going to go for first person shooter, which is really too bad in my opinion. I really enjoyed the grind in Destiny Vanilla. I really do think that most people that play Destiny Vanilla also like the grind. It's, uh, it's a loot and grind game. You farm and you grind and that's that's destiny. That's what destiny is for a lot of people. It's not a casual game and it shouldn't be tailored for casual gamers. Uh, I seriously do think that Bungie has earned enough money on Destiny Vanilla to just keep it for people that like to grind. So it's hard for me to understand why uh, Bungie really want to remove themselves from something that was really successful. I, I mean, come on, Destiny Vanilla had a lot of players. The player base in Destiny was huge. And now with Destiny 2, people are bored. They are dropping players like crazy. People people, they don't see any reason to play anymore, and uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but the Curse of Osiris doesn't really remove that problem, it's still there, so people we are still uh, gonna drop, I think, uh, this is gonna be just a week or two, and uh, then people have farmed everything they needed. So basically, it feels like uh, Bungie doesn't really care about uh, hardcore fans, so the hardcore grinders, uh, they are going to look to other games on. I'm really sorry, but I do think that's going to happen. And it's going to happen soon. I don't really see the solution for Bungie. They need to redo the whole game. I think it's, it's such a casual game now. Uh, whenever I play, I play really casual. I don't really see any point doing anything else because... Uh, Basically, I just go and do some public events, and I'm gonna end up with a ton of legendary engrams and probably a ton of exotic engrams. And it's all gonna be duplicates, so there's there's no reason to grind anymore because uh, you're not getting anything cool. You're not getting uh, the dream role anymore. Uh, everything is the same, so. 
I guess we will see with the uh, forge uh, where you can combine Vex technology into weapons. Maybe that's where the grind is now. Maybe that's where the farm is now. So I don't really know yet because I haven't been able to test the forge. But uh, that's the only hope I have for Destiny 2 to actually be a loot and grind game. The signs so I actually hate doing these kind of negative videos. I'm so tired of doing those kind of negative videos, but it needs to be said. And uh, I feel strongly about this because I'm a huge Destiny fan. I'm, I fucking love the Destiny games. I even actually kind of like Destiny 2. It's just that there's uh, things that needs to be fixed. Anyway, uh, let's let's just drop this rant and uh, go through the rest of uh, the Curse of Osiris. <laughs> the last couple of minutes hasn't been real inspiring, I guess. I don't feel inspired, but we're going to go through and check out the exotic weapons and uh, a little bit about the forge. And we're going to wrap it up. So, the first exotic weapon I want to talk about is the hand cannon, Crimson. And it's a hand cannon <laughs> that fires a three round burst. And it actually heals the wielder for every kill. So, this <laughs> could be kind of bad or good news for PvP. Anyway, unfortunately I do not have the stats for any of the exotic weapons, so... If you can find it, just uh, drop it in the comment and I will try to add it to the video. And the next uh, exotic is Prometheus Lens, which is basically Cold Heart. A solo trace beam that generates a big hot field of fire that grows the longer you continuously fire it. Kills with it also refill the magazine a bit, so keep that fire button down. And thirdly, we have the Telesto, which is a fusion rifle from Destiny 1, uh, or Vanilla. And it was actually my favorite weapon in uh, Destiny. So it's so good to have it back. And I actually got it yesterday and it's so sweet. Basically, it's a fusion rifle that fires projectiles that detonate on a short timer. It sounds hard to use, but it really isn't. It's uh, <laughs> kind of easy to use it actually. Uh, multi kills with it refill kinetic and energy weapons instantly. So the next one is the colony. It's a grenade launcher that uh, spits out spider robots that run off the targets and explode. Um, and while it's not equipped it refills the magazine automatically. So. Uh, it sounds cool. I haven't seen it in action. I haven't seen it on streams or anything yet. So it's going to be exciting to try that one out. And finally, we have the Jade Rabbit, which is a scout rifle. I'm not sure about how the perks uh, work on that scout rifle, but basically if you chain body shots, it will power up your next precision shot and will actually return ammo to the magazine. So this is basically the, the one scout rifle I really want. I love scout rifle. If you've seen me on my streams, you see that I play a lot with scout rifles. And this one seems really awesome. So over to some information about raids and the campaign and stuff. Uh, the campaign is about three hours. It actually took me four hours, I think. Uh, there's a new world quest, there's new missions, new strikes, new adventures, new crucible maps, and new free roam activities. Uh, the big question has always been, is there a new raid? Oh, by the way, a little disclaimer here. Uh, this is from some site, so I'm gonna link to the site in my description. Yeah, back to information about the raid. Uh, there is no raid, no new raid. It's uh, Curse of Osiris will 
add a raid layer, uh, which basically is a new section to the Leviathan raid named Eater of Worlds. So it's the big door at the front of the ship will open up and will tackle an entirely new set of encounters, new puzzles, new loot. So there's completely new places to explore and there's a new final boss for us to fight. Ethro Wells will be just as challenging as the original Leviathan raid, but it will take less time to complete. So the raid will, or the raid layer, will go live uh, sometime soon, I guess. Okay, and we also have some information about the December 12th update next week. So legendary weapons will drop as or be upgraded to become masterwork versions. Masterworks will have a few advantages over the baseline legendary weapon. Track and display the number of kills with that weapon. Generate orbs for you and your allies on multi kills. Add weapon stat bonus that are selected randomly from a small pool and are re rollable. Masterworks drop from any source of legendary weapons for characters above. 250 power. Unwanted masterworks can be dismantled into materials that can be upgraded to an existing, existing legendary weapon into a masterwork. Raid and trials of the nine weapons will have a very high chance to be masterworks. We have future plans to extend masterworks to other gear and expose your kill count in more places, for example in the crucible kill screen. Faction armor and weapons will be unlocked for purchase for legendary shards and, and faction tokens on most faction vendors. All five armor slots will always be present and weapons will rotate weekly on factions that have weapons. Slots will be unlocked by claiming reward engrams from the respective faction. You will get credit for engrams you may have already claimed since launch. And that's actually pretty sweet. Sir has some new offerings for players collecting exotics. Every week you will be able to acquire one of the new fated engrams using legendary shards that will decrypt as exotics that aren't already in your collection. That is so sweet, that's pretty cool. Uh, a simple three of coins that boosts exotic drop rates from any source for four hours. So I guess that's gonna be something that you can buy through Sir or even tests or uh, probably only by sir and there's no obscure stacking mechanics or need to reapply before every boss so it lasts for four hours and you can do 30 bosses it still lasts for four hours <laughs> this costs legendary shards and you can have as many as you like commander savala and lord shucks will sell gift consumables for legendary shards that can be used during a strike or crucible match that will serve the following functions. Grant bonus rewards to everyone in that activity upon completion, friend or foe alike. Award anything from faction tokens to a round of exotics for everyone in the match. Exploit safeguards on chests and resource nodes are greatly relaxed and players should encounter them less frequently. Wow, that was hard to say. Even if they do drop, even if they do, drop rates for tokens is only reduced by 30% instead of 0% and glimmer, glimmer will be unaffected. We want to associate a visual indicator with this in a future update but we weren't able to pull that off in this update. 
but we hear you. Vendors will now beckon you to hand in your reputation tokens only when you're carrying enough to earn a reward engram. So yeah, that's a little bit about the December 12th update. And the way I read that update is, we're gonna go back to what we talked about in the beginning here. The way I read that update is that it's gonna be so friggin' easy to just get the weapons you want. It's gonna be like you go to uh, the faction vendor and you buy the friggin' weapon and it's gonna rotate every week and it's gonna be so easy for you to get them so there's no reason to farm anymore you you don't have a reason to play anymore and this is just sad in my opinion this they are breaking the game and it's really hard for me to understand why they are breaking the game but yep that's the way they want it they want casual players and uh so, to all the casual players, welcome to Destiny 2. You can play a couple of hours a week and you're gonna get the weapons you want. Don't worry. Bungie is gonna take care of you. As I said uh, earlier, I really do hate to make these uh, kind of negative videos. And I really <laughs> wish there was something to be really excited about. And basically, the only thing I'm kind of excited about is the forge it's uh, gonna that we are gonna be able to forge the weapons it's gonna be kind of exciting to try that out so we do have some reason to farm we, do, we have to farm those uh, there's some kind of uh, stuff that we deliver to brother Vance and uh, we get some other stuff that <laughs> it's gonna make us able to forge the weapons and I'll get back with a video as soon as I have forged a weapon so and if you have and you have uh, put out a video please leave link to that video in the comments so I can check out how it works it's gonna be fun to see so yeah that's that's about destiny 2 now it's the state of Destiny 2. And uh, yeah, for casual players, feel free and welcome to everything in Destiny 2. For hardcore gamers, hmm, what game are we gonna look for to play instead of Destiny 2? Any suggestions, please put it in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching, and again, I'm really sorry about. Uh, putting out this negative video and uh, please if you like the video please put a like on that and if you want to put some comments if you have some suggestions or whatever kind of comment you have be positive or negative just put it in the comments thank you and i'll see you again